I have some lettuce transplants and some red veined sorrel that I plan to put in with the blue curled kale, the savoy cabbage, and I have one Copenhagen cabbage. I'm just going to put them in between and the reason why I'm interplanting is to use some of this wide open space while I can. The lettuce will grow, I'll harvest it, and the cabbages and kale will grow and fill in the space. So let's get to work. I just have to be careful with these sticks because I don't have tops on and I forgot my needle. <coughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to plant some of these gorgeous lettuces in these spaces in here. And it makes for good use of space. It's already been dug over, so it should be fairly easy to plant these out. They have a gorgeous root system. I planted the seeds for this red lettuce on March 1st. And they do have a lovely root system. And most of my lettuces I pick the leaves from. I pick the leaves from before I let them actually go to a head. So plant that in there. Put our little tag by that one. Put these in. I like to have a lot of color in my garden. <clears throat> Each color that a, a vegetable gives you it has different nutrients. So by varying the colors in your garden, you're getting all kinds of good nutrients from it. Let's see, I have one more. And there goes Wyatt. One more red lettuce. I think we'll put him up over here. And I'll show you the rest when I'm done. Okay, so we've managed to get in some of the red leaf lettuce, some of the Arctic King, and the last one is Little Gem. So that will grow nicely between each one of these plants. I'll be able to harvest those out before the longer term plants. And that's a good use of space. So consider interplanting some of your vegetables in between each other to get your best use of space. We'll be right back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cover these up because I've already seen cabbage moth and I don't want to take a chance of them damaging too much of the brassicas in the bed. Okay, right about now. You're probably asking, what in the world did she do? Well, for anyone that knows cabbage moths and cabbage worms, they realize that a lot of their brassica crops will get eaten by the bugs and not by the gardener. So what I was trying to find out last year, what could I possibly put up that would be inexpensive until I figured something better to purchase. And the idea I came up with was wedding tool, T-U-L-L-E. You buy it in the fabric store. It's relatively cheap by the yard. And I've used these thin skewer sticks. I guess they're maybe about two, three feet tall. Um, they're just wood sticks and I put the tool over top and then I put a clothespin around the post but then also about halfway through where needed 
I take a clothespin, grab some more of the fabric, and shove the clothespin into the ground. It looks kind of silly, but it lets the sun through, it lets the water through, but it does not let the cabbage moss through. And it works, and it was inexpensive. So, let's see how it works again this year, and maybe it's something you might want to improve upon, or try in your own garden to keep the critters from eating your brassicas.